Minasan konnichiwa, this is Tina and welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the types of sunscreen formulations, their differences and also which one might suit your skin type the best. If that sounds like your thing, then please go ahead and channel it all good. So I have heard a couple people be confused with all the different types of sunscreen formulations from cream, gel, stick, milk, and so on. So I thought I would make a dedicated video on this topic to kind of help guide you to which sunscreen might suit your skin type the best. By the way, I'm not going to be talking about like the difference between chemical and physical sunscreen or the SPF and PA rating. I am purely going to be talking about the formulation. I guess it's like the actual texture of the sunscreen. Today's video is also sponsored by Style Vanna. They do have a very wide range of SPFs on their site. Of course they have Korean but they do also have a good variety of Japanese which is my favorite type of sunscreen. All the sunscreens you see in this video are available on Style Vanna and if you do decide to shop with them make sure you use the code INF10TTH as always to get yourself a nice little discount. I will leave all the links and details in the description as well. Now I did want to say in advance that the answer to this isn't really cut and dry black or white because there is going to be those products that are labeled sun cream but they have more of a gel texture but I just really wanted to help guide you guys especially in regards to say Japanese sunscreen and no matter what I say in this video or what my opinion is ultimately the best sunscreen for you is going to be the one that you are going to wear every single day so please keep that in mind. Firstly, we're going to talk about cream sunscreens. I'd say this is the formulation we see the most these days and especially by Korean brands. This is probably because it is closest in texture to your cream or moisturizer and it has some skincare benefits too. It does usually contain some oil content and moisturizing ingredients, which usually works really well for normal to dry skin types. An example of a cream SPF that I think a lot of people would be familiar with is the Perito Green Level safe sun SPF which obviously is no longer available but the new version of SPF their daily go-to sunscreen is actually really really similar in texture and also a cream SPF maybe slightly more dewy compared to the old one. This one is a hybrid sunscreen meaning that it does contain chemical and mineral filters and is also fragrance free. Personally I actually really like the new formulation for my dry skin. So the pros of a cream SPF is that it is moisturizing it also adheres to the skin very well and gives a very full even coverage and it also does wear well under makeup. The cons are that it can be slightly harder to remove so you need to make sure you do a proper double cleanse at the end of the day and depending on how many kind of moisturizing and skin benefiting ingredients there are it could be a little bit oily for some people. So ultimately I recommend it for normal to dry skin if you do have oily or combo skin you might want to skip your moisturizer with this one. Some other cream SPF examples I have today is the Peslo safe recipe sunscreen. This one does have great skin barrier strengthening ingredients like panthenol and ceramide and it also does have soothing ingredients like centella and hotinia cordada. I always never know how to say that one. <laughs> it is actually a surprisingly creamy white cast free sunscreen for being a mineral sunscreen. It is from a Korean brand that I only recently found out about and have been really really liking the formula although it does have some essential oils and you can definitely smell it in there. Another one is the Skin 1004 Centella Airfit Sun Cream Plus. I would say this one is like borderline leaning into a milk or fluid formula, but the name of the product does say sunscreen. Sunscreen. Sun cream. So I will um, give it to them. So this one is a slightly tinted formula, but once you blend it out, it does help to kind of give that even toned um, look all over your skin. And since it is again a mineral sunscreen, this tint can help to counteract. <laughs> what am I saying? I put on so many layers of sunscreen on my hand already. Yay, yay. And the tint can actually help to counteract the white cast it might have since it is also a mineral sunscreen. But since it is tinted, I don't know if it would be completely invisible on all 
skin tones. Next we have Milk, also known as Fluid Sunscreens. This formula is more runny or watery in texture. In Asian countries they do often call it a sun milk, whereas Western brands may call it like a fluid. For example, the La Roche-Posay ones, I'm pretty sure they're called a fluid. So this formula also spreads and applies very easily to the skin and it can almost work as a primer underneath your makeup as well because it does have more of a silky finish compared to to a slightly more dewier or stickier finish a cream formula could have. Milk formulations aren't usually my personal go-to because I've really had hits and misses with them. Sometimes I love them, other times I don't. But the one that I can say that I do love for sure is the Anessa Perfect UV Sunscreen Skincare Milk. In Japan, this one has been known to be the ultimate skin protector for the longest time. They always recommend it for people who don't want to tan, don't want to get any damage from the sun because it does have a total total of eight UV filters, both physical and chemical. So the pros for the Milk SPF is that it is generally less prone to shine or greasiness. It works as a great makeup base and is usually very waterproof and sweatproof. Cons are that again, it is one that is quite hard to move, so make sure you double cleanse. And sometimes if the formula isn't great, it can almost feel kind of powdery on your skin. So I would recommend it for all skin types, but especially for those who do have oily combo skin or live in hot and humid climates and they do also say it works well for people with sensitive skin. Next we have the gel SPF. This formulation is really really popular in Japan and one of my personal favorites. If you just want something that is super lightweight and fresh feeling once you apply it, it does usually disappear into like nothing and it is usually with the help of alcohol to achieve that incredibly lightweight texture. I have mentioned many many times in the past but I usually use two layers of my absolute holy grail Nivea Sun Super Water Gel and even with two layers it feels like absolutely nothing and that's why I love it because I can wear it in combination with any skincare, like I don't have to worry about wearing a heavy moisturizer or a lighter moisturizer depending on what sunscreen I wear. Of course you can have alcohol-free gel SPFs as well, which leads me to the beautiful Can Make Mermaid Skin Gel UV. This one is ever so slightly heavier than the Nivea Sun, but I still absolutely love it. It is also a hybrid sunscreen that is fragrance-free and also super, super affordable. So the pros of a gel sunscreen is that it is incredibly lightweight and white cast free. Cons are that it does usually contain alcohol and not as waterproof as others. I would highly recommend it for people who do have oily combo skin or even dehydrated. For those with sensitive skin, it might be best to check if it does include alcohol or any other um, irritating ingredients before you try it out. Another gel sunscreen that I have been trying out is the Thank You Pharma Sun Project Water Sun Cream. Now, this one does say sun cream, but feeling the texture and also the high water content, I would definitely say it leans more to a gel texture. This one also has a beautiful texture and is a very hydrating SPF with chemical filters. I will say it does have a fairly strong fragrance to it. I don't know what it is, but I absolutely love it. I think it reminds me of something maybe I wore in the past, but it sells, smells like sunscreen with some other fragrance and I love it. But if you don't like fragrance, you may not like this one. Next we have Essence Sunscreens. I would say that the gel and essence formulation is quite incredibly similar and probably the only country that really makes a point of them being different is Japan. I have had a lot of people ask me the difference between a essence and gel product in Japanese sunscreens. It honestly just comes down to the ingredients. Usually the essence formulas do have a bit more kind of skincare or skin benefiting ingredients and is usually a bit more moisturizing. In Japan, they often recommend to use the essence type on your face and then using a gel type for the rest of your body since it is a bit more lightweight, non-sticky, and they usually do sell it in kind of bigger value size bottles. For example, the Biore UV Essence is usually 50 mils and the gel is usually 90 mils but they do retail for about the same price so you do get better value with the gel. So the pros and cons are generally the same as a gel but the pros would be that they are still really lightweight and white cast free but slightly more moisturizing than the gel and the cons are again it usually does contain some alcohol and not as waterproof. 
I would recommend the most for normal to combo skin. I am pretty sure the Biore UV Aqua Rich um, Watery Essence is like the number one best-selling Japanese SPF globally and it is another one of my all-time favorites thanks to its super super lightweight texture and I'm actually currently trying out the cool version of the Aqua Rich Essence. It's so interesting. Japanese people love adding this cooling um, effect to a ton of products during the summer. It isn't like super overwhelming but when you first apply it you definitely can feel that slight cooling sensation which would definitely be really really refreshing in hot summer months and again it is that super lightweight watery texture that just like disappears into your skin. Another essence that I have been incredibly impressed with lately is the Omi Verdio UV Moisture Essence. I don't know why I hadn't tried this earlier because it is so damn affordable and it is also fragrance and ethanol free. They actually do recommend it for use on kids as well as people who do have sensitive skin. So this one I've also been loving but it does have quite a dewy finish so if you do have oilier skin it might be a little too much for you. Next we have the Stick SPF. This one has become more and more popular over the last few years due to its convenience and usability. I probably wouldn't use it as my first application of the day or my primary form of sunscreen but I'm pretty sure everyone would agree that it is just so bloody handy especially this Abib quick sunstick protection bar it is genius for its size and shape it is a thin container but wide and then also curved so it actually fits onto the kind of curvature of your face really really well making it super quick and easy to reapply. The pros of a sunstick is that it is obviously super handy and travel friendly. It is easy to reapply even over makeup and it isn't messy because you don't really have to use your hands to reapply. The cons are it is harder to get a full even coverage and it also can sometimes feel like that there is a bit of a film on top of your skin. I would recommend this type for reapplication throughout the day. And then the last one I have today is the Compact, also known as Cushion Formula. Another one that I wouldn't recommend as a primary or first application, but really great for reapplication. I have the VT Cosmetics Essence Sun Pact, which is almost like a balmy texture, but there are other ones that are more like a cushion foundation as well. If you are someone that does like a dewy finish on the skin, you might actually prefer this type over this sunstick because it does give that kind of a nice dewy glowy finish and it also is a bit more accurate in its reapplication due to the puff. This one is also super pretty, I must say. Just looks gorgeous, but the blue and white helps to actually brighten in even skin tone, and it also has a very slight cooling effect when you first apply it. The pros of a compact or cushion sun cream is that it, again, is very good for reapplication, especially on top of makeup, and it is travel friendly. The cons are that it is hard to apply a generous amount all over your face. Again, I would recommend it for reapplication throughout the day. Obviously, there are even more formulations out there and they probably will continue to have new ones pop up in the future. As I said in the beginning, in the end it really doesn't matter whether I recommended a certain formulation for a certain skin type as long as it works for you and you're going to wear it. That's all that matters. But I do hope that maybe this video can help guide you in your next SPF purchase. And please leave a comment with your absolutely number one holy grail sunscreen because I want to know. And also don't forget to check out Style Vanna. If you do want to know my sunscreen recommendations, click here. And if you do want to watch another fun video, click here. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!